Okay. So we have made it to ancient Corinth. Uh, yeah. Way to go. Us. From our apartment in New Corinth, which, frankly, no offense, New Corinth, but you are no ancient Corinth. <laughs> I think I'd rather... I think there are more restaurants in these ruins than there are in New Corinth. <laughs> exactly. So... Anyway, uh, these are the ruins of ancient Corinth. Beautiful landscape behind. I mean, speaks for itself here. No commentary needed. Snow-capped mountains, hills, sea of uh, the Gulf of Corinth, the canal you've seen in other videos and photos. Um, leads all the way around. So really dramatic, and we're standing at a really significant spot called the Bima. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's this little kind of raised platform. Mm, what's left of it? Uh, here you can see some some religious markings, two crosses, and a quote from Corinthians, the book of the New Testament. Why is Corinthians called Corinthians? Because it was written wow. where? I don't know where St. Paul wrote that. But he was writing to... Corinthians. Corinthians. Uh, yeah, he wrote letters to mm -hmm. the residents, the citizens of Corinth, mm -hmm. hence Corinthians. Uh, but this, so St. Paul took, what was it, four missionary journeys around the world in the first century, the middle of the first century A.D. when Christianity was still extremely new and not proven and, and not that widespread. Uh, Judaism and still paganism were the religions of the day. Correct me if I'm wrong on anything. And uh, St. Paul visited uh, ancient Corinth here at this spot, worked as a tent maker, and tried to speak to the, the Jews that were here to convert them to Christianity. They really doubted him. They put up a lot of resistance uh, to his preachings. And at one point, uh, he was persecuted by the Romans who were in charge here at the time. He was brought to a trial. He was brought to speak, something along those lines. And he was brought to this spot right here. And, and here he spoke to the Corinthians and, and their uh, kind of wayward ways. They had gotten too much into uh, the enjoyments of life, the pleasures of life, and not what St. Paul viewed as a moral life. So this is the spot that he would have... The very spot he would have uh, spoken to them at, and it's really a dramatic background to make such a speech. Well, if you imagine, like, it's the like old ruins now, but mm. the scale, the size of this place is huge, larger than Roman Agora in Athens. Mm -hmm. Much. And, and um, yeah, think about the old, those ruins used to be a great, great building. And in the right center of the, uh, the big cities, one person is standing up and mm. trying to uh, convince other people. The definition of one man against the crowd, going against the popular majority, a single man. And, yeah. and after a year and a half in Corinth, he, uh, he made a difference. A lot of Jews did mm. begin to convert. He kept in touch with them. Next, he went to Ephesus, Ephesus in, in modern-day Turkey. And... Uh, the rest is history, as they say, but a significant point, a significant spot, a significant story for history, Romans, Christianity, St. Paul, many things. So, and the Bible, I guess. Mm. All right, there you go. Buddha, what do you think? <laughs> All right. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> On that note. By the way, did you just call me Buddha? Well, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. 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 I'll be safe. Wasn't he a man? Yeah, well. Yes. Yeah. All right. I'm not a man. True. No. Verifiable. Mm -hmm. All right. This guy's going to jump in three steps. I don't know what the story is about this. Why are they trying to jump here in three or four steps? <laughs> <laughs> Funny. All right. Looks like success. <laughs> <laughs>